Hello again. In this video, I'm going to talk about the differences between an ionotropic receptor and a metabotropic receptor. So firstly, when talking about ionotropic receptors, typically, or just in general, they're um, ligand binding receptors. So you have a ligand that binds the receptor and that opens the channel and allows for ions to flow through. So when ions flow through, if, for example, if it's a sodium ions, it could increase the likelihood of um, an extra potential to occur. Whereas if you have a chlorine ion going in, it's ne it's negatively charged, so it will cause the inner membrane to or the uh, inner uh, axon to be um, hyperpolarized and therefore decrease the likelihood of an extra potential to occur. So a key difference between ionotropic and metabotropic receptors is ionotropic receptors are very rapid. In fact, in milliseconds. So an example of this could be acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction where you want fast acting um, action potentials to occur and therefore for you to, you to react quickly. Um, so that's with ionotropic receptors. Now looking at metabotropic receptors. So these receptors, you have um, something that binds the receptor, but this causes a G protein complex to occur and it activates multiple intracellular events where there's secondary messages occurring and um, now, what I said before, how the ionotropic is much more rapid, the metabotropic is much slower. However, it's modular, meaning that it can um, cause um, a gradual increase in the events and um, overall um, activity or things to occur. So if it leads to the ultimate activation or of a channel or phosphorylation of a channel, it could phosphorylate many channels. The thing with it being modular is multiple... Um, secondary messengers can activate multiple uh, receptors and therefore can cause an overall generalized effect much greater than what an ionotropic receptor can do. So an example of this could actually be the serotonin interneuron. And where we see this is with learning. So when you pair uh, serotonin being released with a certain uh, electrical stimulus, let's say when we look, talked about um, with the aplasia, where uh, a siphon was shocked uh the this will lead to a uh, learning where the um aplasia will eventually associate the siphon shocking with um being an aversive um action towards the aplasia not wanting to um have like a certain touch when it is touched at a certain position because of that electrical stock electrical shock being paired with that touch so it can therefore be kind of a modular um, activity occurring. So that is just the general um, scope of how ionotropic and metabotropic receptors differ from one another.